What's up, Samonics? Welcome back to a new vlog episode. And this week we are going to talk about an interesting question because how do you monetize your side projects? In the past, we've talked about the topic of micro SaaS, and currently I'm in the process of building another tool. Uh, I've shared a lot about this in the last videos and also on Instagram or my other channels. And right now, I try to figure out how to make the payments work. And there are really a lot of problems because building a payment for your SaaS is really the most hated part. It is useless in terms of functionality, no customer would ever ask about it, but still it is a requirement by laws to make this in a decent, kind of safe way. And therefore today I want to talk about two problems. Number one is finding the right payment model because there are of course different models of how you can pay for a service. And number two is how to handle all of the taxes that are or might have to be applied to invoices. It is really a complicated field. As a quick disclaimer, I'm no lawyer. I don't uh, give any advice about this. I will just show you what I learned along the process so far and what I understood about it and how I kind of solved it in my own application. Let's start today by taking a look at the different models first of all. So the most basic model is a one-time payment for uh, things like an app, a license on a website, a tool, um, just like you purchased any games in the past. This is a very simple model. Um, you only have this one upfront payment and then basically the account is enabled for everything that will come in the future. In general, that's not really the spirit of a SaaS because a SaaS software as a service um, I wouldn't say that a one-time purchase is really assessed because then all applications on the App Store uh, would be assessed apps, but I don't think that's the case. The second option is the traditional subscription. Um, this model has been very popular since years. Just check out Netflix, Team Treehouse, and creating subscriptions gives you as the owner of your application, your SaaS, your micro SaaS, um, a little bit of security because you know about the payments that you currently have ongoing and you can work towards getting new clients and keeping your existing clients and you have a cash flow all the time if you're dependent on this. Another third option might be uh, pay per use, which is something you see usually with AWS uh, in terms of running your instances or on Heroku. Um, where you only pay for what you use. If you're using the server for like three or five or 10 hours, then you will only be paid for this time for the exact configuration. It's a great model. It gives a lot of flexibility, especially in the beginning. In general, I really like the subscription-based idea since it gives you a lot of security if you have uh, a steady flow of cash coming in, especially if you're a solo developer or just starting out your startup. But at the same time, if you're a startup that requires a lot of money, uh, the subscriptions might be a problem in the beginning since you don't uh, have a huge amount of money right in the beginning and you need to scale this up all the time. So deciding which payment model works for you is definitely a tricky challenge. Right now I'm still thinking about it and I'm not yet decided about which of these I'm going to follow. Perhaps I will even make a combination of them. Now let's get a bit more technical by taking a look at the different payment processors. Um, and gateways that you can integrate in your applications, uh, which of them might be the best, how they work, and also finally take a look at a real example of how to handle uh, all the taxes in your application in actually a not too complicated way. If you want to integrate payments in your application flow, there are actually, I don't know how many solutions for this out there, but there are a few big players and among the biggest are of course Stripe and PayPal. Now, a lot of people really like PayPal uh, in general, um, but I actually like Stripe a lot more, especially when it comes to uh, handling these payments. So using PayPal for whatever, paying for your pizza is of course great, but I don't think they're really very developer friendly. You already see it uh, right here on this page. Um, it's more likely focused on uh, the consumer or uh, some business, but not too much on the developer. Instead, if you check out Stripe, you will immediately see uh, the second entry up here is for developers and the Stripe documentation is really, um, this is of a quality that you I've, I've seen in no other application. 
Um, they have examples like set up a subscription. You can go through this in like 50 minutes and they got examples for all the different languages all the time. So it is really just too easy to set up and work with Stripe. They have powerful webhooks. Um, right now, for example, I also have an ng rock server running uh, which forwards to my current API. Um, so I can test their webhooks. They even have a CLI to test their webhooks. So in terms of usage uh, documentation, Stripe is really, really like 100 levels above anything else. Stripe has some payment, uh, has some fees on their payments. Uh, you can check it out. It's also not available in, in every country. So therefore, is if Stripe is not an option for you, um, there are other options out there as well. So I just made a quick research and I immediately found like four or five different uh, payments. Molly was one. It was looking really nice. All of these are really looking shiny. Braintree. Um, I don't really like the page and all of these pop-ups here, but Braintree also seems to work for a lot of people, but they have a validation process for your company. Um, so if you're just an indie hacker, uh, it might be not too easy to use Braintree. Then I also find Tilly Pay. I have never heard about this. It's actually a Stripe verified partner. So perhaps they're just using Stripe in the background. Really uh, not sure about this. Um, so many ways to um, perform all of this. Now, besides uh, selecting the payment processor or gateway, there's also a problem if you want to use subscriptions. Subscriptions are not that easy to handle, although it's actually more easy than you might think. Uh, but for subscriptions, there are also different ways. You can use Stripe directly, which I want to show you in a second as well. Or you can use a service like Chargebee, uh, which basically, uh, is there some kind of nice demonstration, uh, do a lot of things for you. For example, no, I don't want to schedule a demo. Uh, I want to see a demo. Um, for example, they might create all these pages where a user can create and manage their plan, uh, update the credit card details. All of these are things that you might have to implement in your own application at one time. And these things or service bot just integrate into your application. So you can get widgets or components from them or forward the user to these pages and then they can just change their plan, see their invoices, update the card information, uh, everything you see on the screen inside such a service. They of course have a price as well. Um, so I don't know what's, yeah, it's kind of expensive per month. Uh, well, if you make 8K per month, then you might be able to spare this amount. So um, there are solutions in place to make handling subscriptions easier. I just wanted to tell you this. And finally, another thing that I found on my journey to finding the right payment was Pedal. Pedal is actually different from all these other companies in terms of uh, who's responsible for the taxes. Because if you're using Pedal and integrated, I think in the, I don't know if in the background they also use like Stripe. But if you make um, your business through Pedal, let's say you sell an ice cream or a t-shirt for $10, actually a customer will pay this amount to Pedal and Pedal will take the taxes off and handle all of the stuff and in the end just pay you an amount of money. So you're not responsible anymore for handling the taxes yourself, of course, in your own country for your income and everything like this, but not on all the different invoices to your customers out there. So therefore I uh, initially thought I wanted to give Pedal a try the pricing is, I think you can actually also get started for free. I'm not sure about it yet, um, but I think it's kind of free as well. So Pedal might be a great alternative if you're not interested in building it your own. Now, finally, you have uh, taken a look at all of this and think you're a good developer and you can handle it. And I agree, you can do it because I was able to do it and then you can definitely do it as well. So uh, what I did was I created a product in Stripe. I, um, this was just a fictional price and product for the Kickoff Ionic uh, generator. And I defined this product like $9 per month. Now, the problem is I live in Germany and if I sell to a customer in Germany, I have to apply that. If the customer has a valid business ID, I don't have to apply it. 
if the customer is from France, uh, I have to apply 21%, I think. If the customer is from France and has a valid ID, again, no uh, that will be added. So in the European Union, it is really, really complicated to handle this in a legit way. And I definitely want to make sure that what I do is legit. So what I finally built is actually not too hard. This is not yet live, but an example. So I built this component and in the background, um, I basically load from a country's JSON file that I found somewhere on the internet, which is kind of a lot of useless information. I might clear this file a bit. Um, you can select your country. Let's say I select Germany and then immediately you see here my updated price, including the taxes. I could also go for France. Yeah, okay, they are 20%. I don't know about Spain, uh, 21%. Um, so how does it work? Whenever I select a country in my list here, I will actually make a request to the backend because I have connected my reactive form to either country change or the VAT number changed. And whenever I got a new country code, I will make a request to my API and I wanted to show you the API component quickly as well because there's a node package to handle sales tax. You just define this package with your base country, in my example Germany, and then this package will calculate sales tax uh, for a country and a wet number. Also, it's possible to check if the number is actually valid. So I got these two endpoints that I trigger and of course if the VET changes, I will ask my API if this number is valid. So actually a really simple validation. Select a country, ask the backend if there's any uh, VET rates that you need to apply for this country, add a valid VET number, um, check if the number is valid. If it is valid, you don't have to apply the taxes. That is my understanding. Once again, I'm not a lawyer, I'm blah, blah, blah. So this is my form and now you could enter all your credentials, subscribe, maybe I'll just do it, test one, two, three. Uh, I don't have a, uh, this should, no, I think the testing card from Stripe looks like this in the future and random numbers, let's see. Uh, now I selected uh, Hola Amigo Quetal, this is my country, okay. And let's subscribe and let's see. I'm actually not sure if it works right now. So I imagine it's not going to work, but let's see. Uh, inside Stripe, I might now be able to see. Yeah, actually, that's the customer. Um, my subscription. I see the tax amount applied to the subscription and right here as well. And I can also now see the full invoice. Well, anyway, here's the invoice. Hola amigo, que tal? Just what I added, Spain, with the right taxes applied. If the customer would have applied or added a valid wet number, um, the taxes wouldn't have been applied. And for other countries like United States, um, there would actually normally be no uh, taxes applied. Maybe there's something of wrong with the validation in the background. So it is not yet finished, but you see it is definitely possible. Yeah, no taxes. It is definitely possible to build this flow yourself with Stripe. You just need a few things on the front end, uh, a few routes on the background to check for wet number and countries, but there are packages available and you can also add this information to uh, Stripe directly. Let's quickly take a look at that as well. Um, if you are interested in this, we could definitely also have another episode uh, on all of this. So if you wanna create, uh, if you wanna create a customer within Stripe, you can immediately set the payment meta method, the invoice settings, and here also an array of taxes to which you can push the numbers you get back from the validation. Once you get around all of this uh, and it's uh, implemented, it's actually not too hard. I don't know if this is now 100% bulletproof. I guess there will be edge cases, but right now I feel confident about this solution and the text is applied. That's it for today. I know building a successful SaaS is really hard and monetizing it as well. We've seen different services that you can integrate that make life easier, uh, like Pedal um, or Braintree or Chargebee or anything like this. 
Or on the other hand, you can do it yourself by using a bit of additional code on your front end, on your back end, some sort of validation and then just using Stripe if possible in your country. Because I use it, I of course would recommend Stripe but again, if it's not available in your country or it's missing features that you really need in your application, then you might have to look for something else. Otherwise, the documentation are just too good to ignore Stripe. Or if you want to have a simple life, just go with Pedal, which will handle all the payments for you, all the taxes, everything in regards to this. You will just pay a little bit of fee. I don't know exactly about the pricing, but you can definitely find it somewhere online. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode about monetizing your side projects. If you got any questions, as always, let me know. Also make sure you like the video and you stay subscribed to the channel for more videos. If you have used any of these payments method in the past or uh, payment models that work best for you, I would love to know uh, about your projects because Right now, I'm still not yet decided about the kickoff project. I might do a combination, but I really don't know what is the best way uh, in terms of fair usage, uh, what makes sense and what I can build with limited technical skills. Have a great week and don't work too much on the payment stuff and focus on some important features of your applications instead. And I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon. <laughs>